Hi, thank you for watching Dig Into China. I'm Dong Shang. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. In China, if you are female, educated, and unmarried by the age of 27, people might use a particular term to describe your social status. It is Sheng Nu. It translates simply as leftover woman. The label was deliberately invented to curb the rising number of single women in a traditional society, which sometimes view not marrying as a moral transgression, some even consider it a threat to national security. In the meantime, China has more men than women, a lot more men than women. China's population today counts roughly 30 million more men than women, or 114 males for every 100 females, according to the international data provider Statista. The global average sex ratio at birth is about 105 males for every 100 females, according to the World Health Organization. China's gender imbalance is most acutely felt today in the country's rural areas. Women have increasingly abandoned the rural communities in recent years for urban centers to pursue educational and career opportunities. The exodus of women from rural villages has left men in the communities with limited marriage prospects. These men are likewise referred to as leftover men, or sheng nan. Last year, the director of a Chinese social development think tank proposed unmarried Chinese women over the age of 27 should embrace the surplus of single men in rural China to find a husband. Wu Xiaoming is the deputy secretary general of the Shanxi Think Tank Development Association, a non-governmental organization in central China specializing in social development research. He said, Leftover women should not feel afraid to go and live in rural villages. He even further suggested that Chinese government officials encourage urban women to migrate to rural areas to find husbands by offering programs that incentivize the move. Will it work? After college, Zhao Junru decided to move back to her hometown in Henan province. As an only daughter, she felt it was her duty to live close to her aging parents, even though she longed for the freedom of big city life. Two years later, Zhao's relationship with her parents has collapsed. Things have gotten so bad that she's no longer welcome in the family home. Her crime? Still being single at 27. Zhao's parents blamed their daughter being too stubborn and selfish by refusing to settle down. But Zhao insists that the problem isn't her attitude toward marriage, it's the man in her hometown. She is a college-educated teacher who enjoys writing poetry and making jewelry in her spare time. She's looking for someone from a similar background, but those men are almost impossible to find in her remote corner of Henan because nearly every college-educated man goes to live in the city. Zhao has almost given up hope. Millions of young Chinese women find themselves in a similar position. It's one of the major reasons why China's marriage rate has plunged to historic lows over the past few years. Many in China blame the declining number of marriages on a change in values. Millennials, and especially female millennials, are accusing of being more self-centered than previous generations, choosing to spend their 20s focusing on their career and personal fulfillment rather than starting a family. A growing number of Chinese women are indeed remaining single by choice, despite the social stigma of being a leftover woman. But the word choice can be misleading. It hides the fact that many Chinese women, especially those living outside the major cities, have their options constrained by the distorted human geography. In vast swathes of China, there is an acute shortage of college-educated men. It's a gender imbalance born of many Chinese families' conservative social attitude. When their children graduate from college, parents tend to encourage their sons to go and seek their fortunes in the big cities, whereas they often pressure their daughters to return home and secure a safe public sector job. 
Although there is few data on this trend, but several Chinese studies have reported similar migration patterns, with young women far more likely to return to their hometowns after college than young men. Ou Yang Jing is a professor at the Jiangxi University of Finance and Economics. She says her research has found a stock gender imbalances in white-collar workplaces across rural China. For example, county-level schools have almost no young male teachers. Like Ms. Zhao, female graduates who move back home often find that there are barely any single men in their area who are of a similar age and a career background. Though many are open to getting married, they often end up staying single for years as they are simply unable to find a compatible partner. Recently, a video went viral in China and received national attention. A 25-year-old woman from Yushan County in Jiangxi province posted a video complaining about her frustrating dating life. Before she moved back to her hometown, she had studied at a top Chinese university and in the UK. In the video, the woman says that she simply cannot find a man in Yushan who has a degree, a reasonably open outlook, and an acceptable appearance. There are only 20,000 men with a bachelor's degree in the entire county, which has a population of over 500,000. And many of those men are already married, she says. Sometimes, the woman says, her lack of options becomes absurd. At a recent dating event, she was matched with two men. One was already in his 40s. The other was a teenager still in middle school, and she knew both of them. Miao Guo is an associate researcher at the Jiangsu Academy of Social Sciences Institute of Sociology. She says, women in this situation often feel trapped between two worlds. Unmarried women in Chinese rural counties tend to share the same attitudes towards love and marriage as those in megacities like Beijing and Shanghai. Yet, the communities where they live are far more traditional, which can leave them feeling isolated. Big cities have more men who meet women's requirements and are more socially tolerant, while rural county women are more likely to be influenced by cultural traditions, says Miao. Most women from smaller Chinese cities are only willing to go so far to respect the local attitudes. Though many agree to move back home at their parents' it's urgent, but they refuse to get married unless they find a partner they genuinely feel is a good match. Zhao says she only returned to her hometown because she is an only child. There is no one else to take care of her parents. Several of her high school classmates also moved back home after working in the city for a few years, she says. But she wonders if they made the right choice. A 2021 survey by Chinese dating app Tan Tan found stark differences in how men and women in these areas perceive marriage. 65% of female respondents said they'd only walk down the aisle if they were in a high-quality relationship, while 60% of men said they would get realistic when reaching a certain age and settle for an okay match. This mismatch causes serious headaches for Chinese matchmakers. Zhang is such a matchmaker based in Shangcai County, Henan Province. She says that over 70% of her her clients are female. They tend to work white-collar jobs at the local schools and state-owned companies, and they want to find a partner who has a secure state sector job, a decent education, and a pleasant personality. Zhang considers those requirements unrealistic. It's just so difficult, Zhang says. The better the woman, the harder it is for them to find a suitable boyfriend. The problem is that most elite local men have left the county for the city, Zhang explains. Her male clients are mostly from the countryside and are unable to find a partner because they don't have a good job or are from a poor family. 
Liu, another matchmaker from a county in Jiangxi province, says that she also struggles to satisfy her female clients' demands. She says college-educated women in her county mainly want to find a man with a state sector job, then they consider his appearance, salary, family background, and whether he owns a home and a car, she says. Many Chinese parents agree, but many Chinese women simply want to budge. So will Zhao. I long for someone to love. I think it should be a wonderful thing, she says. No matter how much my parents precious me, I will never marry someone I don't love. A conundrum, a dilemma. This is China Today. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.